Hey, what's up everybody, Trophonet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In the show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. Before we start off with the deck, I want to briefly address the new expansion, Novigrad and the Syndicate Faction. I'm super excited to get my hands on the new faction next week and I'll be doing a first look video as I did for Crimson Curse to have an overview of the new keywords, some of the 90 new cards and open up a few kegs in the process. So look forward to that. But for today we have another deck to talk about. Today's deck is a Skellige deck called Warrior Spirit, themed around, you guessed it, warrior units. The deck is led by Ace Tuirsark, a leader I rarely used before, but one that comes into its own in this deck. Aest is a pretty unknown character to anyone that hasn't read the books. He's Kalante of Sintra's second husband, the Twirsok clan leader, step-grandfather to Ciri, and the last king of Sintra because of this as well. He dies in the defense of Sintra when the Guardians lay siege to it, and in this aspect his leader ability is actually pretty rad. He can play any warrior from your graveyard to your side of the board. This opens up a lot of possibilities and hints at what this deck does best. The Warrior Spirit deck focuses on dealing high damage, setting up a few possible engines and then reusing those engines when they're either taken out or the next round comes around. The resurrection mechanic allows you to be a bit looser about protecting your engines than you normally would, since you have options to get them back later. That doesn't mean, however, that you shouldn't think about when to play them. But let's go over our engines first. You can see the complete deck composition, as always, right here as well. The Warrior Spirit deck has two main engines. Sigvald was included in our Sacrifice deck from a while back and still does 1 damage per turn on order or 2 damage if he's below half health. He's great to keep the amount of damaged units high, which benefits our other damage dealers. But more on that later. He's often one of the first cards I play with this deck, if I'm going first, to draw out a high counter immediately. If he gets destroyed, I get him back in the last round for a retry, and if he survives, all the better. Our other engine is the legendary Hemdal. The hero of the Ragnar Rogue only works on the melee row, but boosts himself by the amount you damage enemies with any warrior units. This deck is filled to the brim with him, so this can ramp up quickly. He's different than Dagger in that he boosts himself by the total damage amount instead of once per damage tick. So if you damage an enemy by 8 in one go using one of your warriors, Hemdal will actually boost himself by 8 as well, basically doubling any damage done from a point perspective. Hemdal can reach insane amounts like this, but he is a high power unit so can be countered by Scorch, the Geralt cards or Leo, and any movement abilities as well since he only works on the melee row. Those are a lot of counters, a lot of possible counters, but if he manages to survive, he can quickly turn a match in your favor. To complement our engines, we have a veritable army of warriors at our disposal. A lot of them actually just do damage. The Uncrate Warrior, Marauder, Heime Spear Maiden, Donaran Hindar and the Kalas all do straight up damage. More complicated is the Brockfar Archer who does damage to a unit equal to the amount of damaged enemies. Madman Lugos does the same, but doubles the damage, which can stack up nicely with Hemdal. Gimby Gurwin is a must-have addition these days to counter swarm decks such as the Araka Queen, damaging a unit and all copies of it by tree. Gimpy is our only non-warrior damage dealer, but he's still a worthy addition. Last but not least, we have Hjalmar on crate, capable of banishing a unit in your graveyard and dealing damage equal to the banished unit's power. This can be extremely high because of two of our non-damage dealing additions, the Twiasak Veteran and Yutta and Dimon with 8 and 12 power respectively. Both of them have their own power on the ploy, so can be tossed early on to have more use from the graveyard later in the match. Remember that that 8 or 12 damage can be doubled with Hemdal as well for crazy combo potential. All of these damage dealers can technically also be played twice with Ace ability, so don't forget about that either. But this deck is not all damage dealers. The Armorsmith can boost a warrior by 3, since most of our units are warriors, he gives us an almost guaranteed 6 points. The Blacksmith is a kind of mini engine, able to boost a unit by 1 on order and gaining an extra charge every time you play a warrior. Again, synergizing quite nicely with our deck. Summoning Circle is a perfect round 3 starter, able to pull multiple units on a long round. 
The circle gives you the benefit of playing an extra unit within the same turn, allowing you to, for example, play Hemdal and then a low level warrior with some damage, boosting Hemdal immediately, leaving him less vulnerable. The Bard Drake Bondu boosts all warriors on the field by one. With his 4 power and 6 provisions, he can easily get his value back and bolster your available engines. We also have some special cards in the deck, mostly focused on resurrection and protection. Freya's Blessing can play any bronze unit from the graveyard. Sigdrifa's Rite, on the other hand, allows you to summon any warrior from your graveyard as well. Emphasis on summoning though, meaning you don't trigger any deploy abilities. The Rite should therefore be used to either replay Sigvald, or even better, Jutta and Dimmon. Since it doesn't trigger the deploy ability, you get her full 12 power in one go. Together with Ace, this also means you can replay Sigvald twice, which is why you shouldn't be afraid to play him early. Mahakam Ale is a handy tool to remove a lock, if necessary, and Iris von Everek is our artifact counter, since Skellige doesn't really have a good one of its own. She also allows you to clear weather effects if your opponent would happen to play any, which doesn't happen all that often. So, we have counters for pretty much anything, lots of damage dealers and solid ways of benefiting from it. Sounds great, right? Gameplay wise, I tried to take round 1 and go for a longer round 3 with the summoning circle if possible. In round 1 I often start with Sigvald as I said before, if I go first, or start dealing damage when I go second. Having Sigvald on the field also allows you to play Hamdal and boost him immediately with Sigvald's damage, since he's a warrior too, which should be your go-to combo. The Resurrection should probably be kept for round 3 to replay both of them, and in combination with the Summoning Circle and Ace ability, you can boost Hemdal quickly in the same round you play him in, to avoid him being killed off immediately. Spreading damage to multiple units and leaving them damaged also maximizes the damage you can deal with the Archer, Donoran Hindar and Madman Lugals, so keep that in mind as well. Gimpy Gerwin and Lacerate can help you deal with lots of lower power enemies, so you can even counter that with this deck as well. With all of this, you should be able to stay on top and snag that lovely victory. And that's it, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Got any other ideas on how to improve the Warrior Spirit deck? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below so we can help each other out. Any feedback is greatly appreciated and you can check me out on Twitter at atrophynut if you want to talk directly. And if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support is really appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwentage. Goodbye!